Hey everyone, welcome back to the Wealth Preservation Podcast, uh, reporting out of California, uh, Mark Scyther, and joined with my co-host in Tennessee, Josh Saunders. Josh, how's it going? Good. How's everybody doing? We're excited uh, for our guest today. We're going to be talking all things communications and PR. So if you're a business that's trying to figure out how to get your uh, world out onto uh, your business out into the world better, uh, we have a great guest, Ray Young, today. Ray, how are you? Doing pretty good. Thanks, guys, for having me on. Appreciate it. Yeah. We are excited. Yeah, we're here back in Tennessee. Ray, where are you at? I am in Austin, Texas, or to be more precise, uh, just north of Austin, Texas. But uh, we're we're in the suburbs. Very cool. I hear there's really good tacos and really good music in Austin. So I've never <laughs> been, but those are uh, those are two things I care about. So so that's true on both counts. There's actually great food, great barbecue. Uh, if if you want, I mean, world class barbecue. Franklin's barbecue is awesome. It's like a whole another level above the barbecue you've had before. Like it's think about the best barbecue you've ever had, and then go another like few notches up. So uh, all uh, right, Franklin's is awesome. Um, but in terms of tacos, in terms of uniqueness of tacos, Torchy's is awesome. You should definitely check it out next time Torchies. here. Because it's so got. I'm gonna Ray. I'm gonna debate with you there a little bit. So okay. I mean, we're starting this episode off on the right foot. We're already talking tacos and food, so this is good. <laughs> I'm a Fuegos guy. I think Fuegos is better than Torchy's. Uh, you know, I can't compare. I've never been to Fuego, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know what to Fuego. tell you. I mean, Torchy's, I'm, so this is like you're, you're arguing levels of, like, awesomeness, you know what I mean? Like, if you're, now you're just, you know, but I am, Fuego, Torchy's is delicious. I'm a, I'm a Fuego's guy, though. <laughs> I, I mean, if you guys want, I can be the tiebreaker and head down there, and I'll just go straight from one to the other, and I'll, 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 I'll determine who's the winner there, so. That, you, there's all, that, well, Mark, there's also a lot of great, I mean, just hole-in-the-wall type you know, places as well as, uh, you know, food trucks. I mean, some of the food trucks are amazing. So. That's, that's my, that is my shtick. My, my, uh, my brother went to Austin. He was like, you know, the, the micro brew scene, as far as like home brews were, were pretty low. However, the, uh, regulation on what alcohol got imported, um, also pretty low. So he's like, I could find beer from all over the world here. So, mm -hmm. uh, he was like, so they're not making their own beer, but they're sure as heck bringing, uh, everyone else's beer in. So, so there you go. Beer and tacos. Beer, tacos, and barbecue. And barbecue. Yeah. There's and a lot that's of great PR. Stuff too, so. That's yeah. PR, folks. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's a, that's, a, that's, a whole, that's a whole that's a whole episode right there just on yeah. that. Oh, for uh, sure. We can talk about all the great places to go in Austin, Texas. But, yeah. But, yeah. All right. But, well, this, but this isn't a travel show, so. Uh, <laughs> yes. Not, not, yet. not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so, Ray, real quick, let's talk about uh, what is Razor Sharp PR and what does Razor Sharp PR do? We are a boutique public relations firm, and our, our, our goal is, and our, our whole focus is business public relations. Our, okay. our goal is to raise the visibility of, of our clients among, among customers, among clients, among investors, to get them to, one, be introduced to who you are and understand who you are, and then build an affinity uh, and an appreciation for your brand and your product and your service. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, that's what we do. And, you know, our, our, we raise that visibility by being, you know, getting our clients on TV, whether that be national, like CNBC uh, or Fox News, or, uh, you know, it could be local, uh, your local ABC affiliate. Uh, it could be, you know, a national radio show. Uh, it could be a national print like the Wall Street Journal. Uh, but our whole, f or, or, or many, many different podcasts, um, you know, uh, we do a lot of influencer relations. So, you know, okay. it's not just bloggers these days, you know, Josh, I know you're fully aware my, my wife was, uh, Christine is a, is a, is a pretty, uh, pretty well-known mom blogger. Um, and, but, but that's expanded beyond just blogs these days. You know, you have different right. verticals that, that people can, uh, can tap into to really reach their audience. So anyway, uh, the, the sum of it is though, is, is we're out there to build visibility for our clients among those key constituent groups, you know, whether that be a lot of, a lot of times it's investors, a lot of times it's consumers. Um, you know, and usually it's both. Well, well, hey, um, uh, you know, we, we want to get into the PR stuff, but, but, you know, on the, on the first episode, we, we like to get a story, you know, basically your background and your history and how you became an entrepreneur. Um, uh, because everyone's got a unique story, a lot of, a lot of, you know, nuggets of advice and, and everything in there. So, I mean, we really want to start all the way back and, and say like, Hey, um, you know, were were you like a, a young uh, eight year old who was wanting to help polish other people's uh, uh, you know class president campaigns, or or do some PR spin at your elementary school, or or what was your uh, childhood like, and did you have any 
early signs of entrepreneurship? You know what? Um, I, I don't know that I would say that I had early signs of entrepreneurship uh, in terms of owning my own business kind of thing, but I certainly was interested in business and 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 uh, business activities. I mean, I think early on, if I was, if if you're talking about eight years old, I wanted to like be a carpenter, right? I wanted to like build things, you know. And that's I am absolutely not interested in that at all right now. <laughs> like it totally changed, but yeah, early on, I mean, I would be in the backyard, you know, basically building out on the back fence. I built a whole clubhouse that used the back fence as a kind of an anchor, right? We built a two story thing, and then we had then we dug tunnels underneath, and it was. And then there was a wood a wood pile right next to it, and so we even dug out and made a secret room underneath inside the wood pile, and so nobody knew that there was like a secret room. They just thought there was just the clubhouse, right? So it was it was a lot of fun as a kid, you know, you're eight, ten, twelve years old kind of thing. Um, it, and so I was anyway. I, so I thought I was going to be a carpenter, uh, you know, woodworker and that kind of thing, but. But then as, as things, time went on, um, you know, got into high school, I never thought about, I never thought in high school, like, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to do publicity, or I want to go and, and uh, be a, uh, you know, a PR guy kind of thing. Um, but interestingly enough, I did run uh, my senior year and ran, uh, I ran for uh, uh, Associated Student Body and, and won uh, the publicity chair. So uh, kind of foreshadowing the things to come, right? Uh, so, so I handled all the publicity for for the student council for that, you know, for my senior year. So that was yeah, kind of the in the yearbook in high school. Were you like most likely to make people famous? That was your that was your thing in, in the yearbook. You know what? That would have been that would have been pretty awesome. No, that, I wish not. <laughs> <laughs> not most likely to be famous, but to make people famous. That was your. Oh. That yeah yeah that would uh, no I wish that would be a good one though. Most most likely to make you internet famous or make you famous. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty cool. But uh, but no, yeah, pub I was uh, ASB publicity uh, chair for uh, for my senior year, and that, that was in uh, the good old uh, city of Wasco, California, so right near Bakersfield. So that's where I grew up. Oh, beautiful Bakersfield! Beautiful Bakersfield! Oh man! Yeah, they got some I good. Mean... I mean, the farmland's great. Don't go to Oildale. Um... <laughs> If, uh, if, you know, if you love um, the color brown, you are going to love Bakersfield. Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends geez. on the time of year. But for like, I mean, it's gloomy and overcast for like four four months out of the year, like November to, to February. And then and then the spring is really great. The fall is great. And then the summer is like just scorching, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's when it's brown, right? It's all nice and green in the spring. And then it's just this brown. Of brown compared that to you know to central texas it's green all the time right people think of texas as being you know this you know tumbleweeds and desert and, and cowboys right uh but that's not even it's not even close to being like i mean i've seen fifel goes west i mean i'm pretty <laughs> sure that's texas <laughs> <laughs> watching too much tv see that's the problem people just, watch too just, much tv uh, yeah, you know, yeah just just uh, 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 mouses, uh, western mouses on uh, uh, hobo trains. That's that's basically Texas. Texas. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. I mean, in a microcosm, yeah, you could probably find that somewhere. Yeah. But, uh, get, and they're always getting chased by big fat evil cats. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you notice that every evil cat looks exactly the same. Sorry, we're going off on a random tangent here, but if you look at, uh, um, oh, who's uh, Inspector Gadget's evil cat? Uh, if you look oh at that, yeah, that it's like Doctor Doom or something. Like the yeah. guy that's always holding the cat. That cat yeah, the yeah. evil cat from Five Goes West. The evil cat from uh, Cinderella. You can tell I have a daughter because I'm watching Cinderella movies. Those three cats all look exactly the same. Totally different animation studios and different genres, but they all look, see. You can only do one evil cat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, cause, well, I mean, you could lump all cats into that category. They're all evil. So, I mean, yeah. so. If you're a cat and listen to our show, please just stop listening. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. joking. I don't. I don't. We used to have a cat. We had a cat for many years. Uh, God rest her soul. But uh, but yeah, no, I'm more of a dog guy. So. Yeah, that 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 was the major major transformation in my wife after we had kids. Was she was she was known uh, as the crazy cat lady. I mean, she was like legit uh, uh, crazy cat lady status. And then uh, we had kids and. All of a sudden, uh, yeah, cat got the boot real shortly after. So it, yeah. that was a huge swing. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Well, we, I mean, you know, we didn't have a, the cat, she passed away, you know, a number of years ago before, actually right before we moved to Texas in 2013. Uh, and then we didn't get anything, you know, we had a dog and then he unfortunately got hit. Um, and then we didn't have anything for a long time. Partly because I had seven kids and I'm like, I really don't want to, you know, I don't need another thing to worry about. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and then my wife was begging me this last year, and the, around the corner we got some some of our neighbors had uh, Puridors, which are beautiful white dogs. It's they're 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 part Labrador, pet, part Pyrenees, and uh, anyway, gorgeous uh, dogs. We ended up getting three of them, you know, which is like, what was I uh, thinking? But I anyway. was gonna say, at, at seven kids, you're over the hump of like the uh, like you know, at some point, the the next edition is really not that much more work, right? I mean, I feel like when you got two or three. You add one more thing to the mix, it's like, oh my gosh! But I mean, if at seven kids, you got to be like, I, I don't know, you could throw in, you could throw in uh, fifty pigs. I wouldn't notice. Oh yeah, no, no, that's that's absolutely true. We started out with <laughs> twins, <laughs> then immediately added uh, a third, uh, so we had three in diapers. So then, yeah, you're right. By the time we hit five, it's like, oh wait, we have a fifth. Yeah, wait. yeah. And then and then six, we're like, eh. and, and then seven shows up, and we barely even notice. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but seriously, it's it's a much like the 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 level of what you need to do to prepare and like then what you it, it's not much more to feed seven as it is to feed six, right? Like you yeah. don't really change yeah. your habits too much. Um, but anyway, my oldest now are out of the house. They're actually working with me, um, uh, and we can talk about that later because uh, I think one of the questions is, has to do with college and all of that. But uh, yeah, uh, how to keep costs low? I think that's uh, that's uh, where that'll come into child play. Child labor. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Build an army of employees. That's right. That's yeah. why I had kids. I mean, I don't want to do anything. So that's you know, <laughs> have well, kids we'll, make them do we'll anything. We're trying to stay on topic for, but we've we've already covered cats, dogs, beer, and tacos. So and, <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry. I'm, hey, I'm just I'm just a guest here. I'm letting you guys drive the, drive the machine. So <laughs> you, you come in with chocolate. Uh, well, I have uh, also a thread that every entrepreneur does like all of those things pretty much. Every person we've had on is we've had this conversation. And I don't know how it goes every time. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, well, well, I mean, I guess. It, that that be a good that would kind of be a good segue into um you know in, into college so uh you know because you were mentioning you know in high school you you ran for um student body and uh, you kind of have your own thoughts about college did did you go to college or did you I did go, uh, okay I, I did I did I went to UCLA uh, which I absolutely loved you know um I uh, I graduated in ninety nine and uh, I mean it was it was fantastic and back then. You know, college was really your your meal ticket to get any kind of real job, right? That's that's mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so I never even I I always thought that that was you know I made my decision to go to college when I was you know probably I mean looking back probably like ten years old you know my grandmother had gone to UCLA back in the thirties um, and uh, you know kind of wanted to just continue that tradition and, and so my parents both my parents went to college not UCLA but um, and so I went to UCLA and loved it got a great education. Um, but as we've, you know, not, not to get, I don't want to get too political into this thing, but, if, but as, as things have progressed these years or these days, um, it, it, it seems like less and less that, that a college degree, depending on what field you're going into, a college degree is less and less relevant. And in fact, you, you can look at a lot of these big tech companies like Google and, and, and Facebook and so on, and they don't even require a degree, anymore, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of companies yeah. like, are like that, right? So they, they're looking for skills. Uh, are you teachable? You know, do you have some skill sets we can work with, uh, and that kind of thing. And and so, um, my my view on on college then is really like you know if, if you need it for like the sciences, you want to be a doctor, you want to be an attorney, or something like that, where you've got to have a degree. Okay, that's one thing. Um, but if you're looking to uh, because it's so expensive and you and you rack up all this debt, and we're talking about being an entrepreneur and being a business person and and getting ahead. You know, you really have to you know, weigh that and say, do you, do I really want to rack up 150k or 200k worth of debt before I even make my first dollar? Right. You know, so those are things that those are questions you have to ask. And so, um, uh, in the case of my twins, who've been working, they've been working for Razor Shark now for a uh, better part of two years. You know, they decided after high school that hey, you know, we want to. Uh, they weren't sure, quite sure what they wanted to do, and so they kind of you know were testing out the waters, and uh, it's worked out really, really well. They love they love to write. They love creative thinking. They love solving problems for businesses from a communication standpoint. Uh, and so really what I've done is just, it's been basically, uh, you know, an apprenticeship. Um, and I mean, they're, they're beyond that now, but at least for the first year, really, it was just, you know, bringing yeah. them up to speed, um, getting them educated about the, the business and so on, and, um, and staying on top of things. Because in communications, as you guys know full well, not, you know, anybody can, can see this is, you know, PR and communications has changed dramatically in, in the 20 years that I've been doing it. 
I have 25 yeah. years, actually. Uh, I mean, back in the day, we would get, you know, when I first come, came out of college, I started working for Burson Marsteller, which is a, they're actually, I think they're Burson, Cone, and Wolf now, or, or I can't keep track, they're all, you know, uh, buying each other out. But they're, they're they, at the time, they were one of the largest PR firms in the world. Um, and they, uh, you know, uh, they, they, I worked in their LA office, and I worked in the Sacramento office, and I would get, beginning of every day, I would get like six dailies, right, daily papers that were thick back then, right? Yeah, they're like, they're like that thick nowadays. <laughs> now, they're, now if you even get them, they're like this. But yeah, right. so it would be like the Mercury News, the Sacramento Bee, LA Times, San Francisco Chronicle, and they're all super thick, right? And you just go through there, and you're looking for angles, you're looking for clips for your client, and then you do like the old school, like, oh, there's we have an op-ed for my client. Well, then you get your scissors out, and you cut it. <laughs> you put it at what's called a mock-up, that's what we call it. You put it on a piece of paper, then you put the masthead, you know, if it's the Sacramento Bee, you just put the Bee's masthead there. Then you photocopy it, and you do a whole book, clipbook. So at the end of the month, you give it to the client, right? Okay, here's all the, here's all of our deliverables, right? Here's where we got you placed, and so on. Um, nobody does that anymore. Everything's digital, obviously, at this point. Uh, and the way we communicate with with with, uh, with journalists is, is very different, you know. Right. Um, you know, we're we're using social media. We're uh, email is still very very valid, uh, but we're doing LinkedIn. We're using Facebook and Twitter, and journalists, especially Twitter, love love to be uh, visible on that on that platform. Um, so uh, let's jump back to let's jump back to your early career and, and uh, kind of left off with you were making the cutouts and uh, um, you know from the, the newspaper articles the mockups yeah. the mockups yeah yeah, yeah. So, so, sounds like sounds like nowadays uh, uh, more so you just take out uh, I don't know Snapchat and take a screenshot tag Sacramento B and and there you go right like hey, yeah <laughs> in some in some ways yes yeah 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 so we I mean if we get you know. If we get, like, for example, uh, not too long ago, we got one of our clients, on, you know, Wall Street Journal story, and it also showed up on the Wall Street Journal app, and it was online, and it was in the print. So you have all these different ways mm -hmm. to, to capture that, uh, to show value to the client and say, hey, look, you were here, you were here, and you were here. Um, and then we also, we use, you know, it, we use data to tell us, okay, you know, what's the value of this particular hit? Um, you know, what's the... Uh, you know, what's the ROI, that kind of thing. So, so at the end of the month, we're still doing, like I said before, we're still doing the, you know, monthly reports where you get that. Remember I said before, we would just give you a, a clip, a physical clip book. Mm -hmm. These days, it's all digital, right? Right, and yeah. And you, you get the, you, you get the and, and there's a lot more data to it too because you can see, okay, how many page views uh, does this site get? You know, what's, what's their, what's their, uh, what's their rank? You know, how valuable is this site? All those kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah. Things. So that, so the clients can really get a sense of, okay, am I getting value out of this? But at the end of the day, it really does come down to the deliverables are, you know, are you getting more web traffic? Is your visibility increasing? You know, yeah. are you getting more sales? Uh, you know, are investors engaging with you more because they see you on TV or they they, they saw you in the Wall Street Journal? You know, those kinds of things. So the, so it, we're really outcome-based. Yeah. Which, which, just you just know. like your sports, Ray, just how you play your sports. <laughs> Everybody gets a trophy. I'm kidding. No, uh, no, no, no. We're not. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no well, I'm not egalitarian like that. It doesn't, and, and that doesn't work in business anyway. Because it's like it, the, the difference between being in the New York Times versus being in, you know, I, some little community paper is, you know. I shouldn't have gotten that. I, I knew <laughs> you were going to jump on. You know, you're going to. I baited you on that one, right? I knew you were going to dive on that one. Yeah. Well, we've known each other a long time, Josh. But I know. I know. <laughs> Oh, that was awesome. So, so uh, going going back real quick. So, so you get out of UCLA, right? And, and uh, you know, I'm assuming you got into UCLA uh, pre um, uh, pre admission scandal. Uh, there's not a there's not an application with your head photoshopped on on an athlete's body uh, somewhere. But but uh, you know, you get out and you get your first job. So, did you get out and right away start a business, or were you W two for a while? No, I was W two for ten years. I kept you know, and actually you know. Even when I was W two, I was I was thinking about starting my own firm, you know, years and years before I did. Um, but it was like, eh, do I jump? You know, there's always that fear. There's on the one hand, you're like, oh, I got a steady paycheck and I got benefits and I got a family to feed, you know. Um, and, and on the other hand, you're like, well, if I then if I jump, then I gotta I gotta worry about you know, running a business, taking care of all the payroll, doing this and that and the other thing, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, though, when I finally realized, it's like, it's a risk either way, because you could get canned just as easily as you could lose your business, you know, right. so it really doesn't yeah. matter. And, and the value that, that I realized that, that you know, uh, comes with being an entrepreneur, it's just, I mean, you just can't replace it. I mean, 
you just can't, you know, in terms of the flexibility, the freedom, and then just direction of, you know, the direction that you want to take your firm. And that's really what really caused me to jump. And this was in the height of the recession, recession actually, it was in 2011 when we started, early 2011. Um, so we've been, Razor Sharp's been in business 10 years now. So it's a pretty big milestone. But but even at the, at the, at the height of the, or the depth of the recession, I guess I should say, um, we jumped and we started the firm and, and it worked. So, uh, you know, it, 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 it the, the part of the catalyst there was I wanted, I had a, another vision, you know, from where I was at the time when I wanted to, I wanted to go in a different direction. Yeah. And, you, you know, were, social media. Cause you left, what was the firm you were at before? At Hall right, you, were at, you were at, you're at the big firm and then you were at Hall. Yeah. Right? So I was a person, Mark Stiller. Yeah. So I was a person, Mark Stiller for uh, a number of years. And then, um, I worked for a small, uh, you know, software, you know, right during the tech bubble, right? It was like, uh, it, right. you know, we did a lot of tech consulting and stuff. So I, I did that for uh, not quite a year. Um, and then I did a, did a gubernatorial campaign uh, and I was the deputy press secretary for, uh, for Bill Simon. He used to be, his, actually his dad was a press, his, was, a, uh, what was he? he was treasury secretary under Gerald Ford. So, uh, okay. but anyway, so I, I helped manage his campaign. Uh, from a communication standpoint, and then I worked for Holden for almost a decade uh, before starting Razor Sharp. So I've been in the business, yeah, uh, 22, yeah, so 23 years When now. you started Razor Sharp, what was kind of that vision? Yeah, what was kind of that vision? The, yeah, the different the vision, the vision was finance yeah. or just how you did business or what? Yeah, so the vision, the, the real catalyst, and the, it, it wasn't just focusing on finance, which you know, we still do focus on finance. Um, a lot we do, but we do real estate and we do travel and we do other types of businesses as well. Uh, you know, healthcare, but but the but the the, the uh, overall you know focus that I wanted you know the vision I had for the firm was integration, right? We wanted to integrate uh, traditional media with social media, um, and and all the as, as all these other platforms are kind of exploding and started to you know how do you do that, right? And and I felt like I felt like at the time, um, and granted it was you know still fairly early on with the at the you know the the, the internet in the in terms of you know commerce and social media was very nascent and we wanted to, but but still i saw i i knew that this was going to be a bigger deal i knew that social media was going to be a thing that was here to stay um and i wanted to be able to have a vision for a, a firm that, that that does does traditional media relations okay. but also integrates that into into social and so that's why we do a lot of influencer relations uh you know uh, campaigns these days as well as traditional. Right, I think Mark, Mark and I are going to have to disagree with you there a little bit. We, we think social media is a fad. So yeah. we, we think it's, it's on the way out. That's well, really uh, you know, it's, well, <laughs> you know, it, man it, still maybe certain to, uh, aspects of social media are on the way out. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my my old man still uh, threatens to go back to writing letters because of what social media has done to our country. And I'm like, well, I'm probably still going to call you. Uh, I'm not going to write you a letter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, well, that's right. I would rather text than I would, you know, yeah. write, actually physically write Yeah, and we'll dive on the second episode. I'm excited about diving in about how social media has changed the PR world, but we'll kind of save that for the for the second one. Yeah. So, yeah. Ahead, you, yeah. you, well, well, so you launched this right during kind of a crazy time, you know, the, the height of the recession and everything. Were there... Were there people kind of bugging in your ear, like, "Hey, you you have kids, you have a wife, you have a cat, right? Uh, that you you got to feed. Maybe don't do this." Or did you have people who are in your corner rooting for you? I mean, what what was that experience was like mostly, making such a huge decision? Yeah, you know, um, mostly people were like, "Hey, right on, way to go," uh, kind of thing. Uh, I don't remember. I don't really recall much of uh, in, you know too many detractors. Um, you know, right off the bat, we had we had some pretty good client uh, client base, uh, just because of you know many many years of relationship building, uh, and so so we started off pretty doing pretty well. Uh, there was a little bit of a lull initially; it was like about a three or four month lull where where we had to ramp up and, and, and you know get these clients. Um, but but yeah, it, it it actually worked out quite well. Nobody really there weren't really any detractors. It was really just you. I, I felt you know a lot of encouragement. Uh, but also, I, I just remember, you know, I got to hustle. You know, I got to hustle yeah. to make this happen, right? <laughs> right. Otherwise, I'm like, uh, I got to go back to work for somebody if I don't, <laughs> if I don't make this, you know, make this happen. So, right. So yeah. So so, but yeah, it was it was, it was positive. I mean, and, and people were also too like, well, you're brave. That's that's impressive. I'm, you know, um, that you're willing to do this right now when everybody's like, you know, I mean, the economy was in the tank. And, 
Okay. Yeah. So this is a good question. We've had this conversation with multiple uh, entrepreneurs, or, you know, business owners. Is you know, you kind of did it the same way. Is you didn't just like dive out and start from zero, right? You had some clients that were going to come with you, right? So you weren't basically starting from nothing, right? I mean, obviously there's a lull to get billing out and get paid and all that kind of stuff, but you weren't just like, hey, I'm starting today and sticking my flag in the ground and guess what? I'm a PR shop. Anybody need PR, right? You kind of, right. you had a plan to transition, right? Absolutely. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I would never, I would never have jumped. And my recommendation is to any entrepreneur is make sure you have a plan. Uh, and if you can, to the degree that you can, have some clients move with you when you're, when you're launching your business. If yes. Possible. Yeah. Um, Mark, I, 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 I've heard the saying big, big risk, big reward. So I, I think go no clients. So that's the bigger <laughs> risk, right? So that means well, we get more reward. That is <laughs> risk, but you might end up with no reward. If it, you know, I mean, <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but, but I mean, I had, I mean, I had a, you know, at that point, yeah, we had all seven kids. I did have a cat. <laughs> so like I had all these things I needed to worry about, right? Um, but, but yeah, so no, I definitely had a plan and I had clients and, and, and a big, what I had was a big anchor client and a few smaller clients, right? Right. So I, had, I had my pretty big solid, okay, if I lose the smaller clients, you know, I'll still be okay. Um, you know, but, uh, but then that, that only lasted four years until they got acquired. So, um, and that's a whole nother part of the story is, is, uh, you know, how to, how to adapt to that. Cause when you get acquired, obviously th good things can happen, but also very bad things. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. So kind of what were some of those early stage like successes and, and failures? I mean, obviously you just said you brought over a big client when you started, which was great, but we're, you know, so it's kind of talk about that. And then also, you know, some of the big failures, it might be the same client. Yeah. So, so I think the, the big success was, or, or, or the, the things that, that I think that we did right were like we just said, bringing over a big client, and then we worked it really, really hard, right? All of our clients, yeah. and we still do. That's why our clients hang around for years and years. I mean, some of our clients have been around for you know almost you know, almost the entire time we've been in business. Um, right. And so, and actually, actually, if you track back, I still have the same that that legacy client, that original client that we had, um, it was a big financial services client, Stern AG, that got it that got acquired a number of years ago. Um, the you know that that actually um, through that you know, into the new firm, you know, we're still working with, you know, in one regard, one aspect, we're still working uh, with that same client. So if yeah. you want to look at it that way, we've had the same client for 10 years, even though it's gone through some iteration. And then right. most of our clients hang around for a long, long time um, because we do work it really hard. So that's, that. if there, if we made a mistake, it was that we, it is that we over-service clients too much and we still do that to some degree. Um, where we over-service and we just make sure that you get the best quality and the best results that you possibly can. And that's, that's, what make, that's what's made it successful. But on the other hand, it creates challenges on, on the business development side because I just don't have time to go out and mine new business, right? And that's, right. Where, that's where about four years in, when these guys got acquired, um, and we were navigating through the whole you know, huge process of, of figuring out which clients are going to stay, whose heads are going to roll, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, we ultimately went down to probably about a third of what our original retainer was. Um, we still, so we made some, so it didn't, it didn't sting, you know, it, it stung, but not as bad as it, as it could have. But that really, one, the, the, mm -hmm. what I realized through that is that I had put too many, you know, I put all, most of my eggs in that one basket, which was a mistake. Um, because when anything happens to that one client, then you're like, uh-oh, what do I do now? So we, again, you know, and this is in 2015, really had to really hustle uh, and make sure that we got more clients. And so these days, these days we're spread out across various different uh, verticals, various different clients, all business related, all people, all businesses looking to raise their visibility uh, and looking to be thought leaders in their industry and, and that kind of thing. Um, but if any one of them went away, you know, for whatever reason, you know, like, for example, we lost two because of COVID and then we gained two because of COVID, right? So um but but you just don't know what's going to happen so so you don't want to be in a position where uh, you know all my income is coming from one source uh because if that source dries up then you're kind of uh you're out of luck yeah and, and uh you know because you you mentioned something there in, you know you're you were over servicing clients which again like giving people you know really excellent bang for their buck which is awesome but then you were you know then to the detriment of i'm running out of time um, 
how did you balance that or, or how did you eventually expand? Cause I, I feel like expansion is, is, a uh, that's just tough for any entrepreneur, right? Like, Hey, it, spend yeah, time it, on the people I have or, or go out and find new people. It really, it, it really is tough because, you know, you, you know, you have to balance that out because then you got to bring more bodies on and you got to put in more effort. You got to build more of a, of a structure for a firm. Um, so for many years, I mean, you know, I, I would farm stuff out here and there, and we have I have uh, freelancers that we worked with, and you know, for, on different projects and that kind of thing. Uh, but we were never really growing. I, I kind of thought that we would, uh, you know, another mistake I think we made is that I thought that we would grow organically, um, and, and we really did it for a number of years. Uh, it has started to grow a lot more organically, and and, we'll, and we're also doing the outreach and so on uh, these days as well. But but so so we're really growing a lot a lot faster in the last year or two than we have any, any time previously. It also helps that we've added, you know, as I mentioned, uh, we've got, uh, you know, we actually have three 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 folks on board besides myself um, that are that are uh, you know, managing all the different clients and also working on business development. We kind of share all these responsibilities, but but that makes a huge difference because now mm -hmm. that frees me up. You know, now that I have a team, that frees me up to do a lot more business development, to do a lot more strategy and the, and the thinking, and then like the day to day client management and all of that. You know, I'm still very involved with with all of our clients, but that, you know, my team is taking care of a lot of the a lot of the uh, the nuts and bolts of things, right? The right. Communication. And, yeah. And you know, delivering reports and all of that good stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's always the entrepreneur's dilemma, right? Is that like, how do you go from being the technician that really is good at your craft to growing the business? You know, that working on the business instead of in the business, and that's a that's a hard hump to get over. Yeah. Well, and then the 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 third element there, and I, I'm sure this, you know, you had to deal with a ton having seven kids, but also, you know, family, right? <laughs> like, take care of clients, take care of business, but then also you could, you know, you could spend all your time on just one of those, uh, let alone spending time with your family. Did 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 you guys have a uh, I mean, I, I guess how is that like trying to balance all that and be present for you know seven kids and and yeah, you know. that's a, that is a challenge. I always try to you know even even from the very beginning of Razor Sharp back in 2011, I always try to make sure that that we had a, a good life, a life uh, you know work balance. Uh, it does, and you know when you're always when you're connected all the time, that can be difficult. You know, so I mm -hmm. even today I'm still answering emails sometimes late at night or early in the morning. Um, you know, sort of off hours. Uh, but I, uh, but certainly on the weekends, um, you know, on holidays and things like that, you know, if I'm on vacation, I try to really check out. You know. I, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, a hard time there, Ray. I, I've hung out with Ray a whole bunch and he is always on his phone. Yeah, that, that is bad. True. It's part of his business. But it's part I, of the business. But, is. but, but I'll tell you this though, Josh, I am really working hard and, you know, uh, my team is really, you know, trying to extract me. This is one of our one of our internal initiatives. It's trying to extract me from being that day to day, like I'm all not just day to day, but minute to minute, I'm on the phone, you yeah. know, just like communicating with clients and communicating. That's not with a knock, man. So, I thought it was cool. Like we're sitting at lunch one day, and he's like on his phone texting somebody. He's like, I, I'm te I'm texting somebody from Bloomberg right now to get somebody on uh, their fixed income uh, segment in like the next hour. I was cracking up. It was awesome. Yeah, I mean that. Well, and that's how that's how that's how media really. That, that that's how TV especially works. You know, yeah. it's it's very very like, boom 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 boom. You know, it, it, they call you and they want you on on camera in two hours kind of thing. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, so hilarious. so it's, it's. Sorry, I hope you didn't think I was making fun of you, man. I, I no, was, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I mean, I'm still I still do that. I'm still very involved with all of our yeah. clients. But what I'm trying to do is have that balance where I can spend a little bit more time on the vision for the company. Sure. You know, the, and thinking and thinking strategically for our clients a little bit more, right? right? Instead mm -hmm. of being too much in the minutia, um, you know, thinking strategically, uh, you know, what are the different things we can be doing for clients to that maybe they haven't thought of, of course, things they haven't thought of. I mean, that's part of our, you know, as consultants, as PR consultants, part of our value add is that we're going to come in and we're going to give you ideas to help raise your visibility that you probably didn't think of, right? Sure. Uh, things you can do, uh, uh, ways you can go in terms of just getting visibility. Uh, creating content, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's your background as, as you know, maybe you're a CEO which has a really interesting background and we should do some profile pieces on you or something. And you maybe you didn't even think about that. Yeah. You know, so yeah. there's all these different things. So so I'm thinking more vision. Uh, I'm trying to get get out of the more, you know, uh, get, get out of the minutia, but 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 still I love to be involved. And and that's that's really where and that's where the reason that we're in business today, you know, after ten years is 
is we deliver results, right? We're, we're sure. there, we're involved, and we don't let, like I said, if anything, we over-service clients. Right. Um, because we yeah. want to make sure everyone's happy. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I want to get more into, it, it'll be for next episode, because um, that's where we're going to dive more into, you know, the actual PR strategies, how you get someone on Bloomberg, you know, and all that. But to quickly tease that uh, uh, next episode, can you give us a, um, uh, like a, a one or two sentence answer as to why firms should be looking at a outsourcing their PR or, or really looking into a service like Razor Sharp? Yeah, so I don't know if I could do it in two sentences, but essentially <laughs> it's a full time job. I mean, one, you don't know who you know, right? As a business, you don't know who you know. You may be, you may have a great business, uh, and you're you're doing fine. You've been doing fine for the last five, ten years, maybe. Um, and but but you're having trouble breaking out, right? You're not growing. You're not. You're 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 sort of in that sort of a stagnant stagnant place where uh, you know you want to grow. You know you have a great product. You got a great service, but not that many people know about you. You know, and the word of mouth. You know, we have the same problem. Word of mouth like it doesn't necessarily translate into new business, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it does in some cases, but. But yeah, the reason you want to hire, a, a, you know, there's a couple reasons you want to hire a, a firm like ours. One is we're boutique, so you're going to get, and we, you know, we, you've got, we've got, you know, almost 50 years of collective experience, right, for uh, for, for communications. Um, so we're going to bring we're going to bring the the value and the uh, you know the experience and the know-how that you just can't get if you hire, say, one marketing person or one PR person. Right. right. Um, mm-hmm. And you're gonna also gonna have to pay them all these benefits and all these other stuff. You know, it's gonna cost you a lot more to bring on one person than it would be to hire an entire firm of of, of, of experts. In, in Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and because, and especially because of COVID these days, everyone's working virtual. Um, we don't have that high overhead. You know, a lot of a lot of PR firms. I mean, I know they're virtual now a lot of way in a lot of ways. But you know, if you're you got high rent districts like in Manhattan or, or Chicago or LA, right? You're you're paying big dollars just for them to have an office. You right. Know? I mean, and we do as good, and I will actually argue better work, oftentimes with a lot of big firms. You know, I worked at a big firm. Uh, I know right. what they do. You know, yeah. they push a lot of their stuff. You know, not, nothing against the big firms, but a lot of times they'll push stuff down to really junior people, um, who are doing basically all of the client work. Uh, for us, you know, you you get you get twenty five years of experience with me. You get twenty five years of experience with uh, some of my other team members. You know. Uh, so you're you're getting a big a much bigger package for the same price as, as hiring one person your size. Yeah. Well, we're excited about. I I mean I know this unpacking this whole communication part of of a business and how it should be part of your business model and your marketing strategy. It will be uh, fun to talk about next episode. So we're excited about diving into that. Cool. But um, yeah, Mark, let's kick off the speed round. So so what non business related practice? Uh, uh, has helped you the most in running your business? Non-business related practice. Uh, honestly, I think it would be, um, I think it would be just prayer and just, just, just uh, honestly reading the scriptures and just getting me focused, you know, and, and, and being centered, I guess, uh, to, as some would say. Um, so that, that helps a lot. And just, just saying, you know what, it doesn't matter. You know, God is in control. It doesn't matter what what happens. Uh, you, you could lose clients, you could win clients, whatever. But you know, you being being focused like that is makes a huge difference. And that's not obviously that's not related to business. Good answer. I was looking for homemade apple fritters in the morning, but we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So on that same on that same vein, what book do you recommend? Uh, Entrepreneurs or other professionals uh, read, or are you reading anything right now that's kind of rocking your world or, or resonating? I'm reading a lot. You know, my, my family will, will joke with me and say, you know, I start all these different books, but I never finish. I probably have a stack of like 10 books that I'm like halfway through. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, and I know it's kind of a classic, a cliche a little bit, but Rich Dad Poor Dad I thought was yeah. awesome. It really, it's, I won't say that it's like, you know, it's written, you know, written a number of years ago and they've done some updates to it, but it really just changed your mindset, right? It just changed your way of thinking um, to f- someone from the middle class. Because he really goes through, like, here's how, here's how people who don't make a lot of money think, here's how the middle class thinks, and here's how rich people think, right? right. And you really need, and I, and I had to change a lot of my ways of thinking, right? Um, and so I think that book is great. You know, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, if I'm saying his name right, does a great job of, 
of doing that, where, where he, he, he just lays out, okay, here's the rich dad's way of thinking, here's the poor dad's way of thinking. Okay, right? so, so just for the record, Ray, Robert Kiyosaki went to my alma mater. He was also a Marine Corps helicopter pilot, and we have been trying to get him on the show. I have hit him up on Twitter and email. A whole bunch, so if we got well, we and got help us and do that. Josh, he 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 just spoke at, um, uh, at the Nomad Capitalist, Capitalist event. Yeah, right. And, and I know. Andrew Henderson was on the show, so we got to hit up Andrew and, and we see got, if we can schedule that. We got yeah. we got to make that happen. Yeah. Right. we'll yeah. get him on for you, Ray. That'd be that would be awesome. And, and by the way, I, I had that book in my collection for I think like eight or ten years, and then I finally read it, you know, maybe two years ago, and it it, it really is fantastic. I mean, that's it's a great awesome. space. I wouldn't say stop there. I would say that's a great place to start. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. All right. All right. So, not non non business related question. If you could acquire one skill immediately, what would it be? Ooh, uh, to foresee the future. Uh, <laughs> not a skill. I, I said skill, not superpower. Oh, oh. Um, I would love to be able to speak Spanish because that would really help with bilingual outreach and and uh, you know a lot of Latino media and that kind of thing. So, um, I. Uh, what I need to do, though, I can sort of, I can get along in a Spanish-speaking country, um, but, you know, it would take, like, a number of weeks and months for me to... Ray, really Ray, it's no guapo. No guapo. Yeah, no, no bueno. No bueno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was the dummy that took German in college and got out of college and was like, wow, this was not useful. Well, maybe if you were to take Mandarin Chinese, it might be more relevant here. Yeah. yeah. Nine. <laughs> nine. <laughs> All right, so last question, Ray, just be around. So, uh... You got t- you got m- unlimited budget, and you can take a trip to anywhere for one week. Where are you going, and who are you uh, taking besides your wife, uh, besides your wife, Christine? Oof, man, that's a tough one because I, my my bucket list to work, to travel is just it's you know you get one, man, you get one. Okay, uh, I'll say Maldives, um, and the re- and I take Christine and probably the whole family because it just looks amazing, and you, it's like so isolated in the middle of the Indian Ocean. I like it. Um, and, and you get to, you could be out like on the water on a hut, you know. I mean, it's just, it just looks super cool. And, so, your, and it's where, expensive, so it's super expensive to get there. So I mean, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's why I picked that one. I like it. Perfect. So, Boom. Yeah. All right. Well, real quick, uh, where where can people find you and and where to follow you? So you can find me on LinkedIn uh, at uh, it, it's just Ray Young or RC. It's RC Young eight seven, I think, on LinkedIn. Uh, but probably the easiest way is just razorsharppr.com. Uh, that's probably the easiest way, and you could just message me on there. Um, those are those are probably the two best two best ways. Love it. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Well, thank you everybody for uh, joining us on uh, the Wealth Preservation Podcast. Mark, you want to give our disclaimer real quick? Yes, uh, uh, nothing we say here on the show can or should be taken as tax, legal, or financial advice. If you did hear anything. Uh, that that's piqued your interest. Please go see uh, legal, uh, tax, or professional advice for doing anything. Ray, again, thank you so much for being on the show. We cannot wait to unpack uh, your workings in PR and this fad called social media. Yeah, excellent. Well, excellent. I don't think yeah, no, I appreciate it, guys. We'll I appreciate it, guys. This has been fun. It's been fun. Looking forward. All right, to it. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs>